Coach, are you excited? Another season is about to get underway. I know you've got some new faces this year. It's a little bit different team than years past. You do return uh, a couple quality players. Just kind of talk about the outlook for this year. You know, we did talk about turnover. This is something that we've had to address in the offseason. We have five new players this year, and that's, a, that's as big of a turnover as we've had in a long time. Of course, we're returning a lot of key starters, so that's going to help us out. The, the maturation process should not take as long. You know, but you bring in five players that you expect you know, could have a role on your team, and, and you have to go through those changes of developing systems and, and, and protocols and whatnot during the preseason. So really, that's what the next two weeks is about. He felt, hang on just a little quick second. Talk about the slow start last season, and now you have you finished strong. How do you avoid getting off to a slow start this season, and do the girls learn their lesson from that last year? Well, I think you go back and you look at the slow start, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we made a setting change. You know, we graduated an All-American setter, and as hard as we worked, we just we weren't able to find that rhythm early on. But it was we always said it was just a matter of degrees. It really wasn't the big of a change. We just had to get in and, and get working on it. Once we all became comfortable, we went on you know, a pretty historic tear after that, putting ourselves in a position to win the conference. So how do we avoid it this year? I, we have to get back on the floor and we have to work. There's really no magic to these kinds of things other than you get in, you focus on the weaknesses that you have, and, and you just keep drilling it over and over and over, repetition to figure out you know, how to get to where we need to be when the end of this month comes around. What are some of the challenges that you, that you now face going into the season that half the opponents that you're going to be seeing in conference are, of course, old hat, but the other half are not so much. And so there's, and especially, you know, teams that are as good as Louisville is, for example. Right. We've always said that our challenge is our side of the net first. And so we're, that, we're not going to lose sight of the fact that we have to make ourselves a strong team first. Yeah, yes, we're going to be facing a lot of new opponents, some of which are higher quality opponents than we faced in the past. You look at Louisville, you look at UConn, uh, you look at Cincinnati. I mean, those are teams that are perennial top level, top tier teams inside of the former Big East. And that's going to be the measuring stick. But for right now, we have to be the best that we can be before we think about going in and try to take you know, those guys down. Obviously, that's the goal. Our goal is to win this conference. We're, we're making no bones about it. Our goal is to be in position to win the first American Conference Championship for the school. But to do that, we really have to focus on ourselves first. We've got a lot of new parts that are going to be coming in. We have to become much more consistent in the setting department. We have to become a lot more consistent and out of system because the opponents that we're going to play are going to keep us out of system. We have to be comfortable out of system. We have to thrive out of system. Our outside hitters have to be able to terminate balls out of system. The thing that I don't think we lack at all, we don't lack athleticism. We're going to be as athletic as anybody in this conference. Now, how do we use that athleticism to our, our strength, you know, instead of it being a weakness? We graduated uh, Meredith Murphy and Danny Harrison, two four-year starters in the backcourt. That's the biggest thing that we really need to replace. That's a lot of passing and a lot of defense. Now, I have a lot of confidence in the players that are coming in, including our transfers. I think we have an ability to fill that hole. How long is it going to take? I don't know. We won't know till tomorrow, and we won't have a better idea until we get through two days. How's the leadership on the team uh, kind of looking? Is that developing still? Do you feel like you've already identified the leaders? How, how do you kind of identify the leaders on the team? You know, we do it kind of in a unique way. We let the team identify who they think the leadership is. I, I think a lot of time coaches, you want to force a leader upon the team and it just doesn't work out. Our, our team's got a good head. You know, they're great kids in the classroom. They're great kids off the court. They know who should be their leaders. And so we let them select. We allow them to nominate. We allow them to vote. And then eventually we end up with somebody that has uh, 14 out of the 15 votes. And that ends up being our captain. And we've had uh, Delana Sarden has served in a captain's role. Kaylee Green served in a captain's role in the spring. We'll see what happens when we come out of here in the fall. But the leadership has always been solid because the maturity and the internal belief system and uh, you know, just kind of the, the, the way we do things, our way of doing things has taken hold. And so really, no matter who the captains are, the team seems to follow in a pretty tight line of what we're trying to do. And obviously a lot of teams are in camps right now, NFL teams, college football teams. Obviously, you're about to be in a camp. What is the typical day like uh, for your team? Do you have them all day? Do you have two-day practices? Is there a lot of film study? What is, oh, what, what sure, I mean, for volleyball, it really depends from year to year. When you have a veteran team, you don't have to spend quite as many hours. Um, you, you really work on system. We don't have that, I don't think. Not right now. We're not going to treat it like it's a veteran team. We're going to treat it right now like there's a lot of new people, and we're going to have to go back and just do a lot of teaching. So it's going to be two-a-days.
plus probably an extra mini session a film or walkthrough on the court or just a passing practice or something like that. So for right now, uh, they'll be going from nine until noon. Uh, we're gonna take a long extended break and we're gonna start again at 6.30 and go from 6.30 to 8.30. That's a little bit later than what we've normally done, but I want them to have a good five to six hours of break in between so we can go hard in both sessions. Um, that's gonna really allow us to figure out who we are and get our skill level up to the position where we can be a good system team and then our system to be up to a level where we can be a championship caliber team. I know you've been playing USF the past few years. You've really tried to promote it as a rivalry, and it was one of the first volleyballs you had here. Obviously, they're a conference team now, a little bit different than years past, but it's the first American conference game. I think that's what, uh, that's September right, yeah. 27th. It's right the eve before the South Carolina game. So are you excited about you know having that be a league rivalry now? Are you, you hoping to get a lot of fans out here for that first yeah, game? Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, I don't know what more a fan could want other than UCF versus USF and something that really matters now. By the luck of the draw, we get them here first, and we get them here on a really big weekend. And I think that's just got to be one of those weekends that's cross-promoted between football, volleyball, soccer, whoever else is in town. That's got to be a UCF All Sports weekend right there, opening weekend in the conference. So, uh, yeah, that's always going to be a rivalry for us. Um, we, we don't shy away from that, and I wouldn't expect that they would either. But hey, you know, let's line it up and let's play. You know, we can throw out any history that there is. Same thing with football and all the other sports throughout the history. Because now, in the same conference, this is where it matters. Now we're playing for championships when we play those guys. Not seeding, not pride. We're playing for championships. And that, that's going to mean something really special to us when we step on the floor with them this year. Administratively, I mean, I know it's still early, and maybe, the, and maybe this is a better question to ask later on in the season, but have you noticed like a difference, especially off the court, in just how the program is being operated under the new conference? You know, Anything new, anything better than the way it was before, those kinds of things? You know, I think the answer to that is no, but it's not for a negative reason. I think that we made the commitment to the new conference two years ago, uh, administratively, in terms of resources, in terms of recruiting budget, in terms of the things that we needed to do to be successful, not just against Conference USA, but against Big East or American opponents. And that commitment was made two years ago, and now we're starting to see the benefits. You look around, we've got the new scoreboards. The wood floor will be in here in a couple weeks. And so in terms of financial resources and off-the-court resources, off-the-court programs, tutoring, advising, you know, those kinds of things, the commitment was made a long time ago that we were going to be able to come into this conference and compete from day one, not work our way into it, be competitive from day one. That's the expectation from the administration. That's the expectation from the coaching staff. And I know it's the expectation from the team because that's how they feel. They feel like they should be a championship caliber team. The wood court, is that something you'd push for for a few years? Is that a surface you've always wanted I to play did. on? I did. You know, I always wanted a volleyball-only wood court. There's something special about walking into an arena and seeing volleyball lines only. And that's what we're going to see with this brand new court. It is absolutely beautiful. They took the old, what they did is they took the old basketball floor, they sanded it down, they painted it volleyball-only lines. Volleyball border, it says UCF volleyball all over it. And uh, boy, that's a huge commitment. You talk about that kind of commitment, we have our own facility in which we can come and practice whenever we want. I mean, that's a major commitment to this volleyball program that this administration has made. And frankly, everything's in place for us to be able to be successful. It's on us now. We just have to get to work and we have to get it done. I'm good. Appreciate it. That was a good cue right there.